Like, what was the number one best thing that happened to you from going on Facebook last year? Like, can anyone name anything? Start doing an audit of your time and start to look like, what is it that, that you're doing and, and how do you basically do more or how do you get to the output that you want? And the first way is once you start understanding that for every phone call that you make, you, you bring in dollars and then you want to calculate how much commission. Like, the next thing that you guys want to do is when you have the mill, look at how much commission that you earned for the year and then have that as the number that you divide. Because that's the number that affects you personally. Right, how much money that you get every time that you make a phone call. Um, and then, then you start asking yourself important questions like, well, how do I make more phone calls? Or how do I get more proposals? And these, these are all questions that lead to the ultimate thing of like, how do I be more effective? How do I be more successful? And then you start saying, well, then I need to, like one way is to create more time, right? How do I create more time? I eradicate waste, right? Or do I spend an hour on a Saturday getting out proposals or following up people and have a cleaner come and clean my house? If I know that one hour of my time is worth $800 to me, does it really make sense for me to do a task that I could find somebody to do for $20 an hour if I make $800 an hour. No, it doesn't make any sense at all. That's costing you $780 to clean your house, right? And you start to look at any other things, like is it worth me commuting, getting up, leaving the house at 8 a.m. and it takes me an hour to get to work? Or is it better that I arrive at work an hour early and I don't just get an hour of extra output, but I save, instead of it me it taking an hour to commute, it takes me 25 minutes to commute because there's no traffic at that time, right? Or like you, st you, you guys need to do that own audit for yourself, but what you'll find is when you do do that audit, like th there is a lot of wastage and there is just a lot of time that is being squandered on little things, right? Or if you look at, like your time report on your iPhone and how, have a look at how long you spend on that thing, right? Average consumption, the average amount of time that people spent on the smartphone last year was three and a half hours a day, right? That's money, that's a lot of money. <laughs> if you have a look at your guys and your output and what's going on, um, and that's what you need to be doing. You need to, and then you start looking at, okay, well then how, like, so, some of the things that you do enjoy, how can you do them while doing something else or, or being productive, right? If you're used to, for instance, sitting down and reading a book and you really like to read books, can you listen to an audio book when you work out? You're still getting the both things, right? It's like double net time where it's like you're not losing any time. You're just compressing and then you start to get really crazy of how you police your time um, and then, like, Everything like my calendar is in there and it's all regimented and if I have to like go to like I had to go to Vic Rose last year It was like the biggest fucking nightmare for me in my, in my life because like I'm sitting there like with the plebs and every time that I'm waiting there It's like it's just costing me so much money, right? That's why I hire a professional fixer to do all of my life admin to run my life because me calling up the bank and spending 15 minutes on hold will cost me a lot of money, right? And it's just not the best use of my time. So I will go out there and I will buy time. Yeah, I will go out and go, how do I get more time? I need to go out and buy it. But the first thing that I needed to do before that is like I was just running my life like so regimented where it's just like there isn't, I eliminate as much waste as possible so I can get the most output. And then once I've completely maximized my efficiency, then I start to go out there and buy time. Start to you, you know, get cooks and cleaners and admin staff and you know fixes and all of the things that I can do to get them off my plate because every time that I spend doing that is just costing me an insane amount of money, right? And there's a lot of like you know negative like limiting self beliefs that will be talking to you and telling you that you know you shouldn't be doing that. Um, you know, depending on like your upbringing, you'll look at it as a waste and you'll, you'll, like, you'll be like, oh, like, you know, that's just being lazy. Like, why would I hire somebody to come and clean my house? Like, I will do that. Like, yeah, that is the scarcity poverty mindset. That is not the expansion and growth mindset. 
that is like you're looking at like twenty dollars a week or whatever however many times and you're thinking like that that is like the most stupid shit in the world to do going grocery shopping absolutely stupid just set it up automate it and you start to like go, okay, where can I get efficiencies? I'm going to automate this. I'm going to set someone up to do this. And you just keep pushing that to the point where because you're going to create so much more revenue as a result of doing these things. So it's not like you, you're going to look at it like, you know, it might cost you a thousand bucks a month to get all this stuff set up, but that might make you 30 grand a year. So like, I, I'm not gonna do that individual exercise for you, but the reason that I wanted you guys to put these numbers in here is so you can start to do that and so you start to value your time a lot more, right? Um, and it just depends on how crazy that you wanna go with it and how, like, how optimized and how dialed in that you wanna get it. Um, for me, that's just like, it's everything. Like my output is everything. And that's like the reason that I don't drink and I don't do any of that stuff. Cause it just like, I'll be hung over for the next hour. I'll feel like shit or my whole productivity will go out the window. So that was just conscious decisions that I made to get more output. And that's just one sacrifice. Do you know what I mean? There's lots of different things in order to, to sacrifice. Um, and it all comes down to like, what is it you're chasing and why you're chasing it, right? And if you're not clear on those things, that's the things that I've been talking about, because if you're not clear on those things, then it's like, you're not gonna wanna give up all these little things. You're not gonna wanna make any sacrifices because the why isn't big enough, right? But it's like, if you're really clear on why it is that you're coming here and why you want to achieve these goals, you know, giving up going on your phone or watching Netflix or going out and getting drunk on the weekend, it's like the pain of doing those things is far greater than you not reaching your goals. So it, it just becomes a complete no-brainer decision, right? Um, and like a great, a great reality check on all of that kind of stuff is like when it's forced upon you, like when you have children and you start to look at those things, like that's something me and you were discussing, is that like you really start to look at it. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, well, every time that I'm doing this, I, I'm not with my child or I'm not doing this or I'm not with my partner. You don't need to have children to do it, right? There might be other things, you know, but it's all about getting clear on like why that you're doing it so you can get really like ruthless with what you cut out. And there's like, the more that you start to look at this stuff, like you do that King's audit out of my book and you'll just see how much wastage is there. Like it's ridiculous, right? Like just, just say that on average that you're spending three hours a day on your smartphone. Like if you time that by how many days there are in a year, that's a thousand hours, well, 1095 hours over the course of the year. And then if, you know, you're gonna basically divide that down by how much time that is gonna get you, it's just... Based on how much my, my hours... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, th th then you start to see, okay, well, this is, this is pretty outrageous. Do you know what I mean? Like what's going on here is pretty crazy. Um, and that's the only way, and, and you do that for everything. Do it with your commute time. Do it with where you live, how much rent you pay, you know, w where it is that you've bought a house based on, you know, the cost. And, and then you start to get really transparent with, with how things are and what the actual reality of it is, right? Um, and if you are still going to do those things, you need to look at, well, what are some other things that you can do while you do commute or while you're doing those other things that you enjoy where it's not just a straight up loss, Right? They say that if the average person listens to audiobooks while they commute in the car is the equivalent to doing a college degree every year. Right? So instead of listening to rap caviar on Spotify, listen to audiobooks and it's like you're getting a degree every year. Um, but this is like, I'm just telling you the things that have worked for me. Right, you, it's ultimate up to you guys how you want to do it. And I'm not just saying that you just become like a machine that doesn't have any enjoyment on the things that you do at all. It just means that you're definitely more stringent with how you allocate your time and you just don't look at it. Oh, it's just, I'm just going on Instagram for an hour. There's nothing wrong with that, do you know what I mean? Well, depends on what it is, do you know what I mean? And if you, if you, if you ask someone like, what value did they get from, from Instagram last year? Like, what was the number one best thing that happened to you from going on Facebook last year? 
Like, can anyone name anything? Heaps of girls. Yeah? <laughs> you got some girls? Yeah, that was, that was, I think that's a win. Yeah, that is? Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, and that's just like, could you have been more efficient with your time? Yeah. How many girls did you get from Facebook? Here, this is where the truth comes out. See? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so as I thought, no data, right? So basic, yeah, no metrics, nothing. So like at the end of the day, like you, you have to look at those things and think about, okay, cool, well, is, is that more important than for, for me hitting my goal? But the reason that I wanted to go through this exercise with you guys is so you do get that transparency and you do see the bigger picture. You zoom out and then you can zoom in. And like all of this stuff means nothing if you guys leave here and you don't definitively have a plan of exactly how many dials, how many props that you need to get out in order to get your target. Otherwise, your target for the year is just this esoteric thought. Right? It's like when you speak to a business owner and you're like, oh, how are things going? What do you want to do? And they're like, yeah, I just want to grow my business. Okay, like what? Like what do you want to do? Like how many more leads do you have? How many salespeople do you want? How are you going to get to this target? It's the same thing for you guys. Um, so spend the time in actually going through this and then come up with a plan of exactly what it's gonna take. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click the like button and subscribe. We're dropping a video on YouTube every other day. And if you've got any questions about any of the content that I covered in this video, just basically leave a comment with hashtag HeySubri in the comment section. And every week we're also trying to go through all those questions and get them answered. So go ahead, click subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.